Thank you very much for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about purchase order processing in Acumatica. Let's take a look at our agenda. So we're going to take a look at purchase order entry, purchase order receipt entry and release, AP bill entry and release, and then we'll look at some of the drill down capability. Let's go ahead and get started with purchase order entry. Here we are in Acumatica. I've selected the purchases module and we're going to go into purchase orders. And we're just going to quickly create a PL. So first we're going to see a list of all of our existing purchase orders. And I'll hit the plus sign here to create a new one. By default, it's going to come up with the purchase order type of normal. Go ahead and select a vendor. And I'll just use go to vendor here. And then I'll come down and add in the document details. We'll go ahead and add an inventory item or a stock item. We'll choose the laptop computer and let's go ahead and order 10 of those. Obviously, as you're doing this data entry, there is pricing logic that can come into play for the unit cost. You can change the unit cost, there's discounting, all of that kind of stuff. But we'll go ahead and just save that. Now that we've created the purchase order, let's take a look at doing a receipt and then releasing that receipt. Well, here we are back on the purchase order and there's actually a couple of different ways that you could do the receipt. One way that you could do the receipt is to open up the purchase order and we can go to actions and approve it. But now we can come in and do a purchase order receipt from here. So this is one way that you could do the receipt. The other way that you could do the receipt is go to the purchases and then go to purchase receipts. So we'll hit the plus sign here. And when you do it this way, you have to first select your vendor. So we'll go ahead and select our vendor. I'll deselect the option for creating the bill. And then on the detail lines, I'll say add PO. And what I'll get here is a list of purchase orders that exist for that vendor. So instead of going to the purchase order and creating a receipt from there, you could do it this way and you can do multiple receipts at the same time. But we're gonna do the receipt just for the one that we created. So I'll click that check box, say add and close. And that will bring in that purchase order line. So as you can see, we ordered 10. If I scroll to the right, you can see that we're receiving 10. And we'll go ahead, save that and then release it. And so now that's been released. So when we did that release, it brought the items into inventory. If we look at other information, we can see the inventory transaction and we can drill into that inventory transaction from here. And you can see the item transaction and we can look at the financial information as well. And you'll see the general ledger account numbers that have been affected by that receipt. So we can see that we debited the inventory asset account for our amount and we credited the inventory purchase accrual account, which is a liability account. So like other systems, when we do the receipt without a vendor's invoice or a vendor bill, in this case, it's going to debit inventory and then credit this accrual account. Our next step is to create the AP bill. Once again, there are a couple of different ways to do that. I'm going to show you both of them. One way is to call up the receipt. I still have the one that we just did on the screen here. And then you can go to Actions and Enter AP Bill. So when we do that, it knows that we're doing a bill for that particular receipt and it brings everything in. The other way you can do it is go to Accounts Payables and go to Bills and Adjustments. And this is kind of like doing the receipt. So We'll hit the plus sign, we'll select the vendor, and then in the document detail, we can say add PO receipt, and it'll show us the receipts that have been done for this vendor that are waiting for bills, and we'll select that one. The advantage of doing it this way is you can do multiple receipts on the same bill, but either way that you get here, here's now our bill. We'll take it off hold, we'll save, and we'll release that. So now we've released the accounts payable bill. Let's go back to our agenda. The last thing to look at is some drill down capability. I showed you a little bit of this already. 
let's take a look at some additional drill down. So now that I'm in my bill here, look at the financial details. We can look at the AV batch. And you can see the journal transactions for this is a credit to accounts payable and a debit to that accrual account. So it's cleared the accrual account. What I'm going to do is go back to the purchase order. So I'm going to go back into purchase orders and let's just call up this purchase order that we created to start this process. Now, if I go to reports, I can view the purchase order receipt and billing history for this single purchase order. So as you can see here, here's the purchase order. Here's our receipt of the goods and then our receipt of the invoice. And we can drill into those documents directly from this report. But the other thing I can do is to find those documents directly from this document. So if I go to the PO history tab on the purchase order, I can see the receipt history and the bill history from here with drill down capability as well. So I can drill into the receipt number, take me right into that receipt, and or I can drill into the bill and I can see the information for that particular bill. So there's a number of ways that you can go back and find what was received and when you did your bill. So again, we took a look at purchase order entry. We did a purchase order receipt entry and released that receipt. And I showed you how to do that in two different ways. You can either create the receipt directly from the purchase order, or you can go straight into receipt data entry, put the vendor in and get a list of purchase orders that you wanna do the receipts against. We also did an accounts payable bill entry, created a bill and released that. Once again, we did that two different ways as well. You could be on the receipt and create the bill for that one receipt, or you can go directly into the bill entry, enter the vendor, and then select the receipts that you wish to create the bills for. And then lastly, we took a look at some history drill down. You can find us on our YouTube channel. You can find NIMS and Associates on LinkedIn. Our email address is erp at nimsassociates.com, or you can contact us at 877 454 3200 and extension 6346. Thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate it.